Yeah. Mm. Which actually makes sense. Totally. All right, let's flip it this way. It's going to be a little easy for us. You times that little saving yeah, by like a work. couple of hundred thousand cars. Yeah. And All right, guys. Uh, welcome. Yes, we're back in uh, a vehicle, and we're back with Andrew. Andrew from Top Gear Magazine, South Africa, and he's our juror that he's doing testing. And we're also joined by Rion Estazen from Toyota South Africa. Hi, Rion. Hi there. And we are in the new uh, Toyota CHR. We're on the uh, front-facing camera, so it's not a left-hand drive version. It's just uh, reversing things here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, brake and lane change. Those of you that watched our uh, little video with the uh, Panamera where we were testing it, you'll know the, the course that we're going to run through here. Wet weather handling. That's surprisingly tight. Mm, when, I, when I tightened the line, it actually... It actually took the line, down. yeah. Okay, so I'll show you guys what's happening out here. Now, Rio, naturally, you're wanting the vehicle to win. Um, I mean, I don't think you'd have a job if you didn't want it to win. <laughs> but what do you think are some of the, the, the strong key points of the CHR that it offers over its rivals? I think the, this obviously the standout feature visually the CHR is quite a, a radical departure for Toyota. Mm. It's a very progressive design and and really this car is aimed at the millennial that wants to look good and be seen in a vehicle that reflects their personality. That in the combination with the 1.2 turbo engine which offers both fuel efficiency and a very broad spectrum of torque. Yeah. which allows for quite comfortable motoring in uh, daily driving conditions. And it's of course paired with a new Toyota TNGA platform, which was first initialized in Prius. Uh -huh. And that's what contributes to the dynamics. So it has the looks, it has mm. very... And you guys haven't made it quite sporty. I mean, um, it really doesn't just feel like a redressed Yaris or something. You guys have really put a lot of engineering effort into sort of oh, the yes. underpinnings, good sporty driving position, nice short throw gearbox. So that's what I think differentiates CHR from some so of the competitors. It's a crossover, but it's a fun to drive crossover. You know, the focus on being fun to drive was kind of elementary in the design brief of this vehicle. And as Andrew's taking us around this short karting circuit here at Kangami, I'm sure <laughs> the vehicle is displaying those qualities. I'm just sitting up front here, just from what I'm feeling, and uh, I'm not going to put it all on the driver. I'm, you know, some of it's the driver, nice, smooth, and fluid, but it really feels to load up and unload very more or more hatch and sedan like yes. than what it does a crossover. And I suppose that's the, the beauty of using a broad based term like crossover is that it doesn't have to conform with one or the other. It can teeter either side and it can strike a healthy balance. No spot on there, Chad. That was part of the chief engineer's aim for the CHR to achieve compact hatch like dynamics mm -hmm. whilst offering you or still offering the raise with ride height, increased visibility, and that SUV type image. Okay, well, I did the last, the first one in third gear mostly, and it was actually fine. Um, so it's got a lot of low down grunt, which is not something you normally get with the Toyota normally aspirated range. So when are we going to see this engine in another car, Rion? Soon. It's Tell a, us more. It's a European-focused power plant at this stage, but it will roll out to more of our passenger vehicles as they go through life cycle changes. It's quite entertaining. Probably one of Toyota's more entertaining, more dynamic models, actually. You're enjoying it? I do. You were saying you really like this, the, the seating position and how the seating position really does promote a sporty drive. I think they've done more than most in terms of focusing on dynamics and sportiness, driver position, mm -hmm. um, good visibility, but also sit, sitting a bit lower than you might do in the, in the competition. And just some of the refinement. I like the fact that the textures are a bit interesting and not just the normal humdrum stuff that we're used to. That yes. actually, there's a bit of effort into into design elements of the car. And of course the diamond theme is 
prevalent throughout the vehicle. I'm going to swing the camera around you quickly. And I just want to show you guys, let me get my finger out of the way and let this thing focus. Uh, the, the diamond theme is all over the place. So you're going to see it on the switches. You will see it on the needles. You're going to see it on the steering wheel controls. The cup holder isn't even round. It's got a little diamond point to it. And then when you move over, this is probably one of the areas of the vehicle that is most interesting to me. It just There's so much depth and so much character over here. Just on the passenger side, when you open the door, you realize how all of those elements separate and how they just blend together once everything's closed. Then you move on to the door card, and while it is a, a, a pretty hard surface, it doesn't appear so, it appears to be quilted, and that's got a fantastic, it gives off a fantastic perceived quality, while still maintaining a, a nice ruggedness to the approach, which, you know, for those with an active lifestyle, are really going to appreciate. We are in the best model here, this is the manual, you do get the auto CVT, but I think you really get a lot more out of the engine and the dynamics with, with the manual, and it's a great manual. Yeah. It's, uh, and it's equipped with the IMT function as well, which gives you rev matching on both up and down shifts. It was something that I really enjoyed. It took a little bit of getting used to, but once you're accustomed to it, it creates a fantastically smooth, smooth drive. Smooth drive, yes. All right, well, we're gonna step out. We're still going here, and those of you that are still watching, and we're gonna show you around the outside of the car and just show you how the uh, diamond motif and the diamond theme sort of carries over to the hard edges and the sharp lines on the exterior of you the should, vehicle. You should probably use the, the grey car for that. The grey car, yeah, it does show it up nicely. Preferred colour choice, Andrew? The grey. The grey one, eh? Hey? Mm. Rion? The white. You like it in white, eh? Hey? Or the metallic blue. I like the metallic blue. I mean, I had that one on test as well and I particularly like the way that it showed off the lines. All right, so let's step out here quickly. Andrew, thank you very much. Oh, I'm just gonna take a look at the exterior. We are in a burgundy one right now. Okay, so this is Toyota CHR. And while the front end is quite interesting in the way that it's styled, it's around the back that things look even more entertaining. And the sharp angles and edges, but we're going to take a look at the grey one because that just shows off the edges so much better. Alright, here's one of the grey ones on test. And this is pretty much the pit pedal. When you take a look at the wing, the wing has got a very almost Codsworth style approach to things. And that is a standard wing, that isn't an optional extra. And we'll just take a look at how raised and angular the C pillar is. The high rear door handle. The way that the uh, kicks up at the rear and what's known as the hockey stick. And we'll just take a look at how these angles refract and reflect here. And it just culminates in that little sharp point almost midway in the rear quarter. Around the back, sharp lines and sharp angles. And you just see the depth and the detail. And it, even the camera, the camera flattens it out quite a bit. Those are the tail lights. And while it may be a little too radical for some, I think those that are just getting into motoring, this is definitely a vehicle that will tick the right boxes and tickle your fancy. Let's just take a look at it from the driver's side now quickly. And of course our review is up on our Auto Trader YouTube channel and there you can see the vehicle in motion. We go through it in a little more detail. This is just one of the 10 finalists in the 2018 West Bank Car of the Year Award. Of course, Land Rover Discovery. There's another one of them. The Audi Q5. And we have it in the silver and in the burgundy. We've got multiple test vehicles. Peugeot 3008. Can't call it 008 because, well, Universal Studios and the guys that do James Bond have got the uh, title on that one. But also some beautiful styling cues of this vehicle here. This rear. C panel, beautiful with this brushed aluminium, and this one's chrome, hockey stick effect, also into the standardized rear wing. Some chrome detailing towards the bottom with the bump strips on the doors. Up front, tiger claw style effect here, the headlight, just some fantastic detailing to what is almost a concave grill. That's the Peugeot 008. Volvo S90. Thor's Hammer is the major theme here. And you see it in this T-bar that runs in the main headlights. Some more detailing a little lower down. This is 
one of those big pink 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 up against the 5 Series, the BMW 5 Series. The Panamera would be more going up against the S Class and a 7 Series than a 7 Series than a 5 Series and an E Class. This is the back of the S90, the Volvo S90. Also, another firm favourite. They had great success with this platform, and it was the XC90. Of course, that took West Bank Car of the Year for 2016. This is the interior of the Volvo S90. Only a few of the finalists. Mr. Johnston and the Porsche Panamera 4. Of course, this is the new Panamera 4. Some new design and new styling. Panamera here of the test vehicles. But a nice well-rounded little vehicle. The one, the one that's really winning hearts here is the Alfa Romeo Giulia. They've got a two-liter base spec, that is the vehicle and the model that they have nominated. And of course, a beautiful Italian styling. The one cherry white as well. The red one, of course, I think Alfa Romeo's need to be in red. And it is the one that garners the most attention. Just take a quick look on the inside, they haven't straightened up the steering wheel, but you get an idea. Still quite alpha, that dual binnacle, gauge cluster, and of course embroidery and embossing on the seats. Lovely, lovely vehicle. I thoroughly enjoy it. BMW 520D is also a finalist. Our previous video we had Edward McCorner with us, the uh, PR and communications manager from BMW. And he was saying the entry into the uh, diesel range for the 5 Series is the 520D. We've also just recently reviewed it. And I'll tell you what, a lovely, well rounded vehicle. Turning with the Picanto, and which ones have we missed out here? We've got the 520 D in white here as well. Like I say, just a handful of the 10 finalists in the West Bank Park year. Boom, boom, boom! Suzuki Ignis. Exciting little car, this. Small with a 1.2 motor. Styling modelled after the Wizkid. Little Suzuki Ignis, probably not its best view. This one, this is probably the one that is, uh, well, the uh, least appealing. But if we take a look at the interiors, it's a very practical setup and layout to the interior of the vehicle. We'll pop in there quickly. All right, lovely detailing, lovely styling. economical motoring but in an attractive and exciting package that's the Suzuki Ignis all right guys well we're going to wrap up this live video thank you very much for joining us I'm going to bring you more over the next two days one day and a half from West Bank Car of the Year 2018